the steps to take in order to be fast in reaching where God wants to, us to reach in life. 15 things I'll be sharing with us very quickly from this passage. First, if you want to have speed this year, first, prepare yourself. Jesus has speed in his ministry because he prepared thoroughly before stepping out. A student who is thoroughly prepared for an exam does not waste time in the hall. He just rises the exam and he walks out. It is the one that is poorly prepared that spends all the time biting his fingers and counting the ceiling until the invigilator says, pens up, turn in your papers. Even at that, that student will be struggling. If you don't want to drag your foot in life, what must you do? Prepare yourself. Help me tell your neighbor by your side, prepare yourself. If you want to move fast in life, tell him, prepare yourself. Tell him again, if you want to move fast in life, prepare yourself. That is very critical. The Bible tells us about a man I will not forget in the book of 2 Chronicles 27 verse 6. It says, so, so Jotam became mighty. King James Version, because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. 2 Chronicles 27 verse 6, Jotam became mighty Why he prepared his way. The last seven days or these seven days of fasting have been days of preparation. Since morning, you can see where I'm talking. Since morning, I've been talking, talking, talking for hours. Reviewing the church structure, leadership, teaching and admonishing the leaders. It is a preparation process. Sometimes when you are preparing, you may look slow. But if your preparation is thorough, you will overtake those who went off hastily without preparation? It is in lack of preparation that the saying proves true, which says, More haste, less speed. More haste, less speed. If you want to move fast in 2022, prepare yourself. Number two, put work before pleasure. Put work before leisure. Labor before leisure. Produce results before you look for rest. And the passage we read, it wasn't only that our Lord Jesus Christ was generating results, massive results on the frequency of preparation. The Bible says, his disciples, the apostles returned. Mark 6, 30. They returned and they gave account of all that they had done and taught. So Jesus was fastly producing results and his disciples were also generating results. If you read further verse 31, he's going to take them out to rest. God will not give you rest if you have not given him results. Produce the results before you look for rest. Many people are too slow in life because they are chasing leisure, pleasure and things that will 
give them enjoyment when they have not deployed their energy level. So you see a young man, he starts out his life looking for relationship, looking for wife. He has not accomplished anything in life. He has not built himself up. Before God gave Adam a wife as a partner, God gave Adam work. So if you if you have not working and you have not accomplished anything with your life, stop looking for a wife. Work before pleasure. Misplaced priorities is the reason why many people are sluggish in life. Work before pleasure is a code that says put productivity ahead of pleasure. Put labor ahead of enjoyment. Even the book of Proverbs says prepare your work in the field. Afterwards, build your house. Please weigh your life. If what you eat is more than what you invest or more than what you produce, it is a sign you will get nowhere in life. You won't go far. Put level ahead of leisure. Jesus made sure they gave him report about what they accomplished before he thought about giving them rest. Giving them rest. What is it that you have accomplished? So they came, verse 30, and gave him account of what they have accomplished. Now that leads me to something else. Principle number three. Give God and authorities above you a progress report. Do you want to be fast this year? Make reporting your lifestyle. Workers who report progress make further progress because they get more instruction on what to do. But those who don't report their progress find out later that they have slowed down in life. Because they couldn't say, this is how far I have come. They couldn't get further instruction on the next thing to do. At the end of the day, the lack of instruction translated into reduction in productivity and speed. As a preacher, when I finish, Lord, the meeting is over. Thank you for your grace. What is next? say do this do this that's how speed is generated in the service of god that's how it is generated in life i pity you if you don't have the habit of reporting to authorities above you don't wait for a report to be requested the Bible says, and the apostles gathered themselves. Jesus didn't gather them. They gathered themselves together unto him and told him all things that they had thought and done. Make giving of reports your daily routine. Give reports to God. Father, this is how the day when this suffer I have gone. What do I do next? Give report to your boss with reports. You assess for that guidance that translates into speed in life. Number four. Take time to rest and refuel yourself. Fasting is not just a January affair. On a daily and weekly basis, rest and refuel. I just dashed out of the service, entered my office and took a quick bath to be able to stand. 
There are certain things. I've stood for hours. Maybe, I don't know, how many hours? I felt like I should just pour cold water on my body. And I did it. And I feel very fresh. Jesus is the one that came to die for sinners. Yet he took rest. Why shouldn't I take rest? He is the one that created people. He doesn't want them to go to hell. Yet. He said his disciples should come away. And he took them to a solitary place. Verse 31 place. He took them to a solitary place. They even chartered a boat to do so. And he said unto them. Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place. And rest a while. If Jesus and his disciples rested. It is not wrong to rest. Resting does not mean. That you are lazy. Rest means I want to recharge. I want to refuel. I want to appraise. What I have done. So I can get back to work more intelligently. The almighty God had the power to create the universe in one day. But he did it bit by bit and rested on the seventh day. If God walked seven days and rested, I should take one day out of seven days to rest. Those days are my rest days. Leave me alone. Except I say, I lift it for this week. There are days to refresh, recharge and reload for your blessing. It is the Lord of Sabbath. God gave man Sabbath to help man. Say, labor for six days. Take out one day to rest. And you said to me, Pastor, souls are perishing. Don't perish with them. Amen. If you want to go fast, take some rest. Even aeroplanes land and refuel and take off again. Generators, after they have sat for some time, they are turned off. Your car, the same thing. Learn to refresh and refuel yourself. I have pastored for 12 years without taking a leave. I mean, running the church every day, preaching multiple services. If I'm not able to get two, three weeks at a stretch to rest. I am taken out under divine instruction those days for my rest. Leave me alone. Rest and refuel. It gives you speed. Number five. If you want to be fast in life, Create and distribute value. What did I say? Create and distribute value. You will observe that as soon as Jesus and his disciples chartered a boat to go and rest, people got a wind of where they were going. And the Bible said they ran on foot. Ahead of those in the boat and I arrived at the other side. Question is when did they rest now? If the people if the people that they wanted to escape from arrived before them, when did they have the rest? Even when Jesus wanted to have rest, people would not let him have it.
verse 32 and they went away in a boat to a solitary place by themselves now many people saw them go in and recognize them and they ran there on foot from all the surrounding towns and they got there ahead of those in the boat maybe they rested in the boat but my interest is that what was Jesus this is my interest what was Jesus offering these people that before he arrived they had already run ahead of him he was offering value everybody say value so the ministry was not dragging because constantly he was creating and releasing value so before he got to the other side people were waiting he didn't arrive and start waiting for them a church where you have to wait for members to come before you start is a dead church that is people's way of saying we are not getting anything from this church we are tired of coming if they get value they will be in a hurry to arrive and when people are arriving that way what you are doing your ministry will move fast the same thing happens in your business if you create value people will chase after you and your business will grow if you don't offer people value for their time or value for their money whatever you are doing will be sluggish the patronage will be low and growth will be slow so if you want speed what do you do create and distribute value that's what jesus did he wasn't content offering that value one side he said let's go over to the other side again he created value and he was distributing it if we create content that solves people's problem saves sinners heals the sick breaks chains of the devil and we circulate it ministry will move fast create and distribute value next if you want to move fast in life develop your leadership skills develop your leadership skills leaders are leaders because they provide direction leaders are leaders because they take charge of tough situations they are leaders because they provide guidance to the people following. So Jesus was the leader here. Boys, it is time. Go out on missions. They come back and he receives the report. Alright? The next thing to do is go take some rest. Alright? The next thing to do now is let's minister to these people since they have already run and arrived here leaders don't lose control leaders are in charge providing guidance and direction in everything that they are doing people who have leadership skills move faster in life than those who don't have it your business will grow faster if you can provide leadership in addition to the product you produce Anywhere there is sluggishness, there is a lack of leadership. Anywhere there is sluggishness, there is a lack of leadership. If choir has a strong leader who does her homework, who knows what today's rehearsal is all about, 
rehearsal can happen in 30 minutes or one hour and achieve a better result than what another leader who doesn't know what another director who doesn't know what to do can achieve in five hours two of us that is the truth if you see the results we have accomplished today you will know that a lot of homework went into it there are places where you can't achieve that in seven days meeting provide leadership and I will take you further and as we progress you will see some other leadership skills of Jesus manifesting leaders take time to develop people and then the people they develop will give speed to their work the fact that you are working night and day without being able to build people up doesn't make you a leader it can make you a slave leaders develop people and then they move faster The wise man has sorry has said i would rather do the work i would rather get 10 men to work than do the work of 10 men i will build 10 men up and then distribute the work than trying to do the work of 10 men he may look slow when he is building men but when he is done you see speed develop your leadership skills as a mother, lead your children. My mother was able to raise eight wonderful children because she has some natural leadership endowments. Do you know when we used to farm? My mother would wake us up by 4.30 a.m., 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. By 5, we are in the farm with lantern. We clear the farmland before we return. Before seven, we are back at home. Take our bath and go to school. As a matter of fact, she prayed with everybody before we went to bed. She lets you know when you wake up to go to work. Sometimes it's to harvest cassava. And you drop it and go to school. The following night, 2 a.m., she has woke, woken everybody up. And before she wakes everybody up, she has already divided the cassava with knives and basins. You, this is your own, this is your own, this is your own, this is your own. We finish moving to the engine. She will even talk to the engine operator. We are coming by 5 a.m. Grind it, come back and dry it before go to school the next day 2 a.m she's woken everybody up some are sieving some are frying and she was still running her business leadership if you were in the house as her child at the age of six you have started taking turns in the kitchen to cook and she'll be supervising so I cooked my first pot of soup eaten by the family of 10. Because there were some others with us when I was 6 years old. And she will supervise. Many children drag through life because their parents lack basic leadership abilities. When it is time to let the child learn how to make decisions, they will be making every decision for the child. Much later in life, that retarded emotional and mental development will catch up with the child, making the child slow in life. A decision the child can make on his feet, one year he has not made it. Jesus was a, 
a master leader. His leadership gave him speed. Develop leadership abilities. Let's move further. What does that mean? You'll get to know more. Let people help you if you want to go fast this year. What number is that? Number seven. Please let people help you. Jesus had to feed these 5,000. But he didn't go handing bread and fish to 5,000 people one by one. It would have taken a longer time to feed them. The work would have been slow. He gave it to his disciples and his disciples did it. If you want to move fast, there is somebody around you. God has provided to help you. Allow people to help you. As a leader, you have a team. People that, who are willing to share the burden of the work with you. Let them help you. As a child, let your parents help you. Don't be too proud to ask for help. Don't be too arrogant to reject help when it is offered. Let people help you. A course you are trying to study, racking your brains to study, someone can explain it to you in 30 minutes. If you want to be fast this year, what do you do? Let people help you. Principle 8. If you want to be fast, create, okay, create order. Yeah, create order. When Jesus discovered that these people were hungry, And the miracle was now in sight. He said to the disciples, please make them sit down on the grass. And Bible said, when they sat down, in the, when they fell down, when they lay on the grass, they were so organized. I don't know whether you took time. <laughs> okay, let's read it again. verse 40 so they threw themselves down in ranks of hundreds and fifties with the regularity there was a pattern regularity of an arrangement that looked like what best of herbs looking like so many garden pots Create order. And the easiest way of creating order is break work down into stages. Get each stage to be carried out by a different set of people. Create order. Let there be process. Let there be groups who know what they are doing. Create order. If Jesus held that bread and said, all right, come and take the bread, it has multiplied. What do you think will happen? They will stampede people to death. Some people will not get. In fact, the miracle will stop. Because God does not bless confusion. He said he is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 38 to 40. You find it there. Our God is not the author of confusion. Create order. In your personal life, create order. Know what you do when. This is when I wake up. This is when I pray. This is when I eat breakfast. This is when I leave for class. If it is service time, I go to service. One hour ahead of time. Create order. Hmm. 
don't live your life haphazardly. You will be slow. Next. Anybody being blessed, can I hear your amen? amen? If you are being thoroughly blessed, can I hear a louder amen? amen. Thank you, Father. If you want to move fast in life this year, be thorough. On a daily basis, be thorough. On a daily basis. What does that mean? Learn how to tidy up each day's work properly. Did you discover that the disciples of our Lord Jesus came to him and said, it is late. Close the meeting. Just share the grace. Let everybody go. Jesus said, no. I won't because it is late. Close the meeting shabbily. I won't close the meeting shabbily because it is late. To you, what matters is just, ah, it is late. Let's close, let's close. And you close in a way you can't start again. You close in a way that tomorrow is aborted. When you are studying your book, there is a place to push yourself to before you stop. Otherwise, when you come tomorrow, you have to start afresh. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? So be thorough. There is a difference between stretching yourself and stressing yourself. Learn to stretch. What has to be accomplished that they don't procrastinate it to tomorrow? Tidy it up very well. So you empty tomorrow. And you'll be able to pursue new goals tomorrow. Some people are too slow in life because every day they leave their works half done, half done, half done. Be thorough. Jesus said, no, I'm not closing like that. If I send them away hungry today, would they come again tomorrow? And I don't want to end my ministry yet. I have to give them something to eat. Let them go away joyful. Then they will have something to tell others to come tomorrow. And his ministry kept growing. Next, if you want to have speed, value and use the resources available to you. Value and use the resources available to you. Do you know why some people are too slow in life? They are waiting for resources, enough resources to take the first step. I had someone who many years ago went to a catering school. Very good catering school. So when she came out, she made her list of the things she needed to start. Electric oven, electric cooker, baking, baking this and baking the other one, this wedding gown and the other wedding gown, different uh, decoration, materials, and chairs, a big refrigerator, with transparent door. By the time she listed them, millions. And she insisted she must have all of them before, before starting. Can I tell you something? It's over 30 years. She never started it. I knew when she was provided with a pop cup machine a sewing machine, 
a baking oven. Start now. More things will come. She refused. That's why many people are too slow in life. If you want to be fast, begin with what you have. Then as you start making progress, other things will be added. Those who don't recognize the value of what God has given them and start with it. Never start. He called you for ministry and you are waiting until you raise the dead before you start. You may never start. If he has gifted you to preach the word, go and start. Provided he says it is time, go and start. Then, you will turn water into wine. And one day, Lazarus will be raised from the dead. Even Jesus did not start with a crowd of 5,000 people. He started with one person, two persons, three persons. Value. I don't know what you have been planning of doing in this year. Begin to do it. Begin with what is in your hand. One of the lessons I have learned in life is that whatever you have is always enough for the moment. Anything you have now is enough. Go and start. A young lady met me yesterday to share business idea with me. And I told her, start. How much do you have? She said, I have 5,000. I say, start. And you know the business she wants to be buying goods from the north and selling here I say order goods with what you have God will quick, give you quick turnover you send again before you know it 5,000 has become 500,000 instead of dragging your foot until you eat that one so if you want to make progress in life value the resources you have right now and begin with it. As you make progress, God will add to it and you have acceleration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next, if you want to have speed this year, be grateful. Be consistently grateful. For every step you take successfully, give God thanks. Gratitude is the secret of progress in life. Ungrateful people don't, don't make progress. When I talk about ingratitude, it really pains me a lot because I see so much of it among Christians. So much of it. Be grateful. Don't be a victim of the spirit of the last days. Second Peter chapter 3, the Bible said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times will come. And one of the marks of these perilous times is that people will be unthankful. I've seen a lot of very grateful people. Be grateful. I once fell in love with a lady. Because of her sense of gratitude. I don't know what I've told you before. A classmate. We used to study together. One day I went to buy lunch and in my characteristic way ha, how will I finish eating this lunch now and go back and these two ladies who are going to study with me I didn't get them anything so I decided to buy was it egg roll or yeah 50-50 naira egg roll I think it was egg roll 50 
when I gave it to them, one jumped up. How she celebrated the egg roll. If I had a car, I would give her the key. Ah! She made me feel so fulfilled that I did that. But some people make you feel miserable for trying to be a blessing to them. And such people don't move forward in life. Parents sent you pocket money and because it was mine, you sighed. And the next thing, a horrible test message. You are blocking your way for progress. Be grateful. Be grateful. For everything God brings your way, for every progress we make as a church this year, be grateful. It's one of the things the Lord told us at the beginning of our leadership meeting. We must take gratitude seriously this year. So, thankfulness can give you speed. Jesus. How does that relate to Jesus? How? What do you have? Five loaves and two fish. He valued it and started with it and heaven multiplied it. But before he distributed, the Bible said he lifted it up and he gave thanks. Can you have 5,000 people to feed and you have five loaves of bread and you are still grateful? One of the translations says he sang praises before sharing it. Be grateful. Father, we give it a praise. We honor you. Following the steps of Jesus, what do I do to have speed this year? Number what? Number 12. Put others ahead of you. We, don't, we didn't hear that Jesus broke the bread and began to eat. Or that he broke it and gave his disciples. And after they finished eating, they gave fragments to the people. He broke the bread and gave to the people. Selfishness slows you down in life. Thinking about yourself first is a recipe for backwardness. I've discovered that the more people I bless in life, the more blessed I am. So, as a minister, my focus is never what to get from people. Never! If anything, zero expectation from anybody. But I have a heart cry. Lord, I want to pastor people and no matter where they go, no matter who preaches to them, they will know this pastor was different. I want to give them a value they cannot find easily anywhere. One of my daughters returned and said, Daddy, honestly, you are my father. There is no, no other place. I've been to places say one night, this crossover night, the message I had has given me more refreshment than what I have had in the land. Glory be to God. But it's my heart cry. What is coming to you now is not chaffy. No matter where you go, no matter who preaches to you from this passage, there is a value you are getting tonight that will not be easily replicatable. So put being a blessing to others ahead of receiving from them if you want to go for this. 
if you want to make decisions the proof that your decision is correct is that God came first others came second then you last that was the ministry of Jesus that is why the Bible says immediately the people landed somebody who said let me go and take a rest when he got there and discovered people were there ahead of him, the Bible says he began to teach them again. Because meeting their need was more important than feeding his stomach. Put others ahead. If you like, a better way of putting it is put the kingdom of God ahead of your personal interest this year. Number 13. Maintain focus. Let me show you something in this passage that the Holy Ghost called my attention to. After the feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. Let's look at what happened. In verse 45. Okay, 44 and 45. 44. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. And at once, he insisted that his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, to Bethsaida. And he was sending away the throne. Did you get it? immediately they finish the eating there is no sitting down and lousily gisting over what happened he insisted means that they were reluctant there is business waiting for us if we have finished what we are doing on this other side over to the other side quickly he insisted that their focus will not be broken And that's why he's the leader. He insisted. It takes some holy insistence to maintain strong focus on your assignment. Oh, they will want to pull you in this direction or the other direction. I, I want to do this. They want you to do the other one. Insist. Maintain focus. Those who are focused in life move faster than those who are not focused. Number what now? Number 14. Avoid waste. As soon as the 5,000 men had eaten, Jesus said, gather the fragments. be a good manager of anything God gives you. And the proof of good management is avoidance of waste. Let nothing be wasted. You will have speed. What you waste today will slow you down tomorrow. The time you waste today will slow you down tomorrow. The resources you waste today will subtract from your speed tomorrow. The opportunities you waste today will reduce your speed tomorrow. The opportunity to learn something today that you didn't learn, opportunity to fast, join in a fast today that you didn't join, will slow you down tomorrow. Avoid waste. God is a hater of waste. And finally, spend time in prayer. Immediately after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus sent them away. And as soon as they left, verse 46, what did he do? Himself withdrew. After he had taken leave of them, he went off into the hills to pray. Prayer is a spiritual mechanism for maintaining acceleration 
in the journey of life. The way you throttle down the accelerator pedal and you keep moving. That's what prayer does for you. Reduce intensity of prayer. Reduce velocity in the journey of life. There is a prayer energy you will begin to generate in your closet now. Your life will move faster. After Elijah prayed for hours on Mount Carmel, he took off on foot and overtook a man who was in chariots. After Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he landed and in three and a half years did what? The whole world could not contain books that could be written about them. If you want speed this year, go down. Bend your knees in prayer. The longer you kneel, the higher you soar and the faster you go. Anytime people are tempted to start celebrating your achievement, leave them. Run back to the closet. Of course, later on, you know what happened. Walking on foot, he still caught up with people who were on the ship. He put them on a boat. Those prayerless men, they encountered a storm and couldn't move. And the one who came from the place of prayer walked on the storm. What was above the head of the prayerless was under the feet of the prayerful. Do you want to have speed this year? Pray. If you spend time as a student praying, your brain will be so hot and magnetic. Like your grand not oil gets hot and fries your meat and fish and potatoes very fast. If it is not hot, it will, it will be there soaking. The things you put will be soaking oil. And they will not fry. You carry some oil in your life. Don't let it congeal out of coldness. Heat yourself up. Heat your life up. Have you discovered that when a vehicle is coming with speed, people get out of the way? Eh? Who knows whether that man is drunk? What is pursuing him? They jump out of the way. But when they see a sluggish man, even the one on foot wants the vehicle to slow down for him. Let your speed this year confirm to the devil that you are too dangerous to be resisted. Let it signal to hell that they need to get out of your way. All these 15 principles we see directly from the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder he was fast in fulfilling his assignments. What will you do? Apply what you have heard. God is not a respecter of persons. Apply what you have heard. And you will have speech. What have you heard today?